Father, we thank you for today. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. Lord, that you are a faithful God. And Lord, we just totally surrender to you today. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come today and fill this house, Lord God. Fill this place with your presence today and have your way in us. We completely, totally surrender and submit to you, O oh God, right now in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone who greets said, amen. amen and amen. Turn to two or three people and give them a fist bump this morning. Tell me glad to see them in church this morning. Amen. praise and honor and glory. We lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that that name is above every name. And Lord, we give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
church, if you want to come and worship in the altar, just feel free today. Just come on up.
praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. that your word says that nothing can separate us from your love. Oh, we thank you, oh God. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow tries to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love
Thank you, Lord, for an open heaven. Let it come. surrender and we submit to you and we thank you oh God for your hand upon us the Lord you're leading and guiding and directing our steps Lord I thank you that our best days are ahead you have us in the palm of your hand because we've placed ourselves there we give our lives to you we surrender our will to you and Lord I pray that you use us oh God to do great and mighty things to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name and all who agreed said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout again hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning if you can. Amen. Aren't you glad? That you're in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Oh, I know I am. Amen. So glad to be in, in the presence of all you folks in here. Amen. You know what? When we're together in unity, it just brings the level of expectation higher and higher. That anointing level gets higher and higher and stronger and stronger when we come together. Amen. So I want to thank you all for being here today. I know, so I know usually on the Sunday that we all have to set our clocks forward, about half the church is missing, but I praise God that, <laughs> that we have more than half here this morning, praise the Lord, but we're so, uh, so honored to, I'm so honored to be in the house of the Lord, amen, amen. Well, I believe we have a few announcements this morning. Y'all give Miss Christine, our administrator, a round of applause, amen. <laughs> Amen. Like, I, like Pastor Will said, we are so glad that you're here with us today. If this is your first time visiting with us, make sure you grab a visitor card out in the foyer and fill that out. We want to have a record of your attendance. We are so glad that y'all have joined us today. Um, our scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah 54.10. It says, For the mountains may move and the hills despair, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. Um, what an awesome scripture. Um, so today, I just want to say a huge shout out to our Chuck Wagon team. We had some good breakfast tacos this morning. If you missed it, I don't know about you, but it was some great tacos. Um, great, great tacos. Hey, I just wanted to say last Sunday after church was like this awesome presence of God. I don't know if you stuck around or not, but we had an adult that was baptized and we had two children right after that. It was just an awesome time to be with each other to have all these kids like gathered around the trough that we were baptizing people. It was, I mean, just wonderful. I walked away and I was like, wow, God's presence is so much around us. And that's what it's about. You know, it's about us um, teaching those kids what baptism is all about. So we had, a, I think we had two five-year-olds, maybe, I'm not sure, set five and seven, a five-year-old and a seven-year-old give their, give their life to God. So we were just so pleased with that. Um, also, hey, if you haven't noticed, I am so excited. But the nursery is moved to this building. We're not in that building anymore for the nursery. Yes! The kids are over here. We have split the kids' rooms for most of y'all. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but our kids' room was pretty big. So we split the kids' room. We've, had, we've got nursery on one side, and we've got kids' church on the other. We brought uh, 
the countertop over yesterday. Huge shout out to my husband, to Bradway, Lisa Wade. I mean, we were just like busting it, trying to get it done. We are almost finished. We've got a gate to put up so that the kids don't escape because that's been our running joke here lately is how do we keep the kids from escaping from the nursery area? But we are so excited. Um, and as, as I told the workers, just bear with us because we are, we are trying to press ahead. We're trying to get everything from over there to over here so that way we're not having to walk across the parking lot. And as I was looking around yesterday, I told my husband, I'm like, you know, we are so close. So, so very close. Like, we are so close to having this building finished. And I'm just calling that in right now that um, God's going to anoint us with the offerings, tithes, the people to get that building finished right now in Jesus' name. And um, that's just a huge, huge shout out to us. But um, anyway, so women's outing is going to be March the 27th. That's a Saturday. We're going to meet here. If you haven't already done so, RSVP to Teresa Davis over there. Also, we've got a potluck that's coming up on March 28th. We're going to have pot roast. Um, we've got a sign-up sheet out in the foyer, so you'll want to make sure that you sign up for um, to bring something for that potluck thing. We've got a lot of donut, donated eggs already. I'm so excited because I know the kids are going to be excited as well. But we've got a lot of eggs that are donated, so we want to thank you for that. Um, if you're not already plugged into our church, I say this a lot, but if you're already not plugged into the church, see me after church, and we will get you plugged in. We're still needing volunteers, you know, to run sound booth to it to help out with kids' church, to help out in the nursery. Every area that you can think of, there's a spot for you. So if you're not already plugged in, see me after church. Also, we are going to have Wednesday night um, service, is what I call it, a Wednesday night service. We are, we're talking about forgiveness and walking out forgiveness. So if you have not already scheduled, make sure you want to be here Wednesday night at 6.30 to join all of us. And I believe at this time I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the children. So if you are 12 or younger, you are dismissed at this time for Children's Church. And parents, like I said, the nursery is right across in the same building right over there in the hallway. So you want to go grab your kids from there after church. And I believe that is it. I'm going to turn it over to Bobby Davis. Good morning. Everybody doing good today? Good. Larry, good to see you. Jason, good to see you. Finally got up out of bed this morning. Come on, didn't you? Yeah. I got to give this guy a hard time, man. He, he's my spiritual son. And uh, everybody doing okay today? Yeah. Bubba, it's good to see you. Good, yeah. Man, it's, it's good to be anywhere, you know. I tell you what, I've got a real quick this morning, and, and uh, to keep it short, I'm, I'm uh, uh, just wanted to share a minute. It's time to, to give our tithes and our offering. It's time to give back. A little bit what God has given us, and to uh, and to bless Him with that. It's not that He needs our money, but He needs our obedience. He needs uh, our cheerfulness and giving, not begrudgingly. If you're begrudgingly giving, keep it, okay? But no, really, because God loves a cheerful giver, doesn't He, Bubba? You know, and He's going to He's going to provide for you, you know, and He's going to take care of you, and so. Uh, uh, it's just the word of God. You know, last week I was watching Will online, you know, and Will, where you were talking about in Luke, you know, six and give. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Just, just, it's, 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 church. Yeah, it's God. Just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Bobby Davis. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm taking up tithe and offering this morning. Well, God, I'll tell them, but uh, are you sure you want me to tell them? Okay, okay. Uh, all right, well, God, I love you, and thank you for calling, and, and uh, I'll let them know, you know? Yeah, so that was real good, what I told you about you love a cheerful giver, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, guys, he said he will, if you, if he will give you what you need being a cheerful giver. He's, he loves to give you the, oh, really, God? Hmm? Okay, all right. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you later, sir. Yes, sir. I need to talk to you about this cattle deal I'm getting in. Okay, Bubba's here, so we're going to talk to you. All right, bye. All right, bless you, but God. Love you and praise you. Bye. That's God, man. He's got my number, and he's got your number, too, you know? And every now and then, he's going to call you, and he's going to let you know that he loves you. He's going to provide for you. You know, we got up this morning, and, and uh, even though I lost an hour of sleep, I feel really good because normally used to, 
whenever I lost an hour of sleep, well, I chased it for six months, you know, and I was just tired all the time, you know, and then I had another time. But, uh, no, I just want to share with you guys real quick, and um, I, I appreciate God calling, and he just said he was really proud of us for giving, and uh, like I shared the other day, Bob, I told everybody that we, we finally got enough into our coffers to finish the church. I, well, we, we've got it. It's, it's here. Isn't that good? You know the problem? It's still in everybody's pocket, you know. <laughs> still in your pocket. But you know what, guys? Y'all have given above and beyond. And I just want to say thank you and bless you. But this is good ground that you sow into. Bob and I, he, he's a cattle buyer and processes cattle, and I deal with cattle. And, and uh, you know, Bob, what do we have to do every fall? Get our ground ready to plant the wheat and the, and the oats and the rye and everything, why? So we can get a good yield because those old yearlings, they love to eat, you know? And and that's what God wants to do. He wants us to, he wants a body where we're a good ground to sow into because if you sow it on rocky ground or the ground that's real tough and everything, it's it's not going to yield much. And our church has got a vision to be an outreach for our community and to go forth out, even to the four corners of the earth, you know? And uh, so we're good ground, you know, and, and one thing, too, I, everybody knows Malachi 3, 8, that uh, says bring the whole tithe that we've robbed God. And it says, how, God, they're, they're like, how do we love you? rob you, God? They love God. You rob me in your tithes and offerings. See, God was instructing them. And, and he says, bring in the whole tithe so that there will be plenty. See, if we don't have plenty, it's hard for us to pay our bills. We can't even send anybody out because a lot of times you can't go where the money's going, but our money can go and send out, and you'll reap the same blessing as if you had went. Amen? So as we uh, as we get ready to make the checks out, Will, what is it? There's a way to give out there in the foyer, right? Amen. Go ahead. Yeah, there we have debit and credit giving in the, in the foyer, and also you can go on our website. That's BrazosValleyCowboyChurch.org, and you can give there also. And it's very secure. Yes, so amen. You're, you're sowing into good ground, guys, and we're going to reap a harvest. Amen? amen. And we're already seeing it, man. The arena, Larry just told me, I mean, yeah, that uh, he uh, uh, got the arena yesterday all shredded down up and everything. Now we're going to get a process going on. We're fixing to put, start putting on some team ropings out there and some kids events and things. So amen. we're just going to do an outreach for the community here. And let everybody come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. If everybody will stand up, we're going to say our prayer, and then we're going to do our, our uh, perfect confession. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you, Father, for that we're able to give back to you, Lord God. And maybe there's some people here, Father, that they cannot give monetarily. They're just really tough. We pray a blessing back. But, God, they can give with their time and their abilities, Father, that, uh, that it would be counted back to them as a blessing, Father God. And, Lord, we just lift up the name of Jesus today over our finances, Father, that you would lead and guide and direct us and show us where every dollar, every penny should go, Father God, to further your kingdom. And we thank you and we praise you, Father God, for what you've already done in this church, the offerings and the tithes that are coming in, Father God. And we just pray that it be blessed back to your people a hundredfold, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's go, guys. Thank you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, accounts and dividends, gifts and surprises, finding money that we can keep, debt cancellation, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs and all of our church's financial needs so that we will have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can bring the tithe up, guys. It says bring the tithes. <laughs>
Amen. Well, I, I've been wanting to hear, uh, hear from this, this very good friend of mine for a while. I've been wanting to be, come join us and, and share what God's placed on his heart. But I'm glad he's here today, and I know you're going to be blessed. This is my good friend, uh, Mr. Mother, Bubba Rutherford. Y'all give me my hand as he comes and ministers the word to us today. How's everybody? Good, good. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad Bobby was in a good mood when he woke up because I was sleepy when I woke up. <laughs> Want to thank y'all for having us here uh, today. And um, Will, I tell you what, uh, when I think of Will, I think of this right here. When you've done all that you can do to stand, stand. And that's what I think you got in a pastor here. And that man has stood and, and God is good. But it's great being here. Last time I preached here was sawdust on the floor. And so, man, it's been a long time. And so uh, you guys are doing great work here. It seems like it's going real good, and uh, just thank God for it. I want to talk to you just this morning for a few moments about um, what if we only spoke what God told us to speak? What would happen in our lives? And you know what? There was uh, We've been talking about this for, uh, or I've been thinking about it and meditating on it for two or three weeks and just kind of, just going over and over and over, just thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And I was like, well, you know what? I guess I can do a series on Facebook or something. I don't know. And then uh, I got the phone call this last week. And I was like, man, this is, I mean, because there's, there's so much to, when, when you talk as much as I do each and every day, there, there, you, can, you can flub some things up, you know. You can really mess up. By, and because what we do, we sell, and that's the way we make a living is through selling. The one thing that happens in salesmanship is this right here. You can talk too much. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you know, and a lot of times what happens is this right here. We, we have come from a long line of salesmanship. And we, that, I, I have been, that's all I've ever done. So ever since I got out of the military, um, I, I was, well, I've been a salesman and, uh, of some kind. And you know, and what we have to understand is this right here. Been to every conference you can think about, been to everything, but you can take salesmanship and you can take that and you can apply it to our Christian lives is this right here. The one thing that when I was training salesmen, I would tell them, I said, you need to be quiet and listen every now and then. And you know what? And, and the whole thing is that if we'll look at, we'll, if we'll look in the, uh, the scriptures, a lot of times, you know, sometimes you can pray too much out loud, out too, praying too much, a lot of times you got to stop and listen to see what God's saying. You know, because you have two different people talking. God's trying to talk to you, and you're trying to talk to God. And sometimes God just trying, would you shut up so I can tell you something? Yeah. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And that's what I mean by that. And so if you will, uh, turn into your Bibles with me for just for a moment. And, um, and to Psalms 141, verse 3. And guys, listen, when I, when I get, to, I'm telling you what, this is because you know, if you've heard me preach and everything, I try to be funny, I try to do this, try to do that, but th I've got something serious here because I'm telling you what, this is burning on the inside of me. So I hope you get this and I hope you, you I want you to listen to me. And I know uh, this is, the, uh, of all Sundays, Will asked me to come is the Sunday that most people are going to be lost at our sleep. And so I want y'all to pay attention to me here this morning, all right? <laughs> and so, but in, in Psalms 141, verse 3 says this right here. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. You know, a lot of times what can, we can do is this right here. We can find times in our lives that uh, you can tell when somebody's not paying attention to you. Because what happens is when you're still trying to tell them something and all of a sudden they interrupt and they start talking back. And all this, it's like, they're not paying me no attention. The one thing I learned, the one thing that I have learned in salesmanship is this right here. If I let that person talk long enough, they'll tell me exactly what I need to tell them back, and they will buy whatever I'm selling. That also includes Jesus. The only thing about selling Jesus is the price is already paid, so there's no money to change his hand. And all you got to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. And, but a lot of times what we have to do, we, we, you literally have to get to that point to where you will stop and you will listen. If, you, if, we, if we would pay more attention to listening 
before we speak, we would see God move some mountains. Let me show you another version of this. That was the New King James Version. The Amplified Version of that same scripture says this right here. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips to keep me from speaking thoughtlessly. To keep me from thinking, uh, speaking thoughtlessly. A lot of times what we do is this right here in life. We just, we just think words are just to be used to do whatever we want to do. I'm guilty. Anybody else guilty? We'll have Will over here pray for the rest of you over here because I know you lied because everybody is guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Every one of us are guilty of it. And, and we have to understand this right here. What if, what if we only spoke the words that God told us to speak? What if we went through life? What was words created for? Now, I'm, uh, uh, they, they got my notes earlier and everything. And you guys, if you have never heard me minister or anything, you might as well throw that order away because it, it may get messed up because I may go skip through. There are some scriptures on down there just a little bit. So anyhow, just to let you know that. But, but what happens is this right here. What if, we, if, what if we just spoke those words, anything we want to, and just sloppily and just went through there and just whatever we wanted to do. In World War II, there was a saying that said this right here. Loose lips sink ships. Y'all remember that, don't you? How many of y'all was in World War II? Oh, no. <laughs> Loose lips sink ships. Loose lips sink ships. And when we realize this right here, loose lips also will sink your, your own ship for your family. Your, your, the loose lips that we have, that if we're not careful, we, we will talk ourselves into being sick. We'll talk ourselves into being broke. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and you know, and, and, and it's kind of like that we'll, we'll talk ourselves into losing everything. We'll talk ourselves. You know what? The, I had somebody, and, and listen, I know there was things that happened in November that was not right, and the things got taken away from us as American people and everything, but if I sit around and if I dwell on what happened in Washington, D.C., and spoke all the negative things that I wanted to, now this is my opinion, I would literally drive myself nuts. I don't want nobody to fail. I don't want Washington, D.C. to fail. Why? Because that means I would fail. But so what I want to do, I want to see things. I want repentance to come about. And so what we have to do, we have to pray for people that are over us. And you know what we have to do? Do you know Jesus died for them? Do you know there's some of those things up there that I'm just wondering if they, you know, Jesus, it's a good thing I'm not Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But you know what we have to do? We have to realize that God died for all of us. And, and, and flesh and blood in, in, another, in, in politics or anything else is not our enemy. Our enemy is Satan himself. Now, what did he do? Now, let me show you something. The reason that Satan is where he is and what he's got right now is because he had loose lips. And he said he could overcome and he could conquer. And look what loose lips got him. And loose lips, what we have to understand is this right here. When we realize that the negativity that takes place in our lives, when we don't take it serious enough of what God has for us, can sink our ship. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, you know, sometimes i got to go. You know, we, there, there was a storm that came about three weeks ago, and it affected some people extremely bad. It affected others even worse than that. But let me tell you, there are some things that happen that if I sat around and I dwelled on it long enough, it would drive me nuts. But you know what? I can't do that. I'd have got to go out there and thank God for the ones that are standing on four feet and eating grass. I think, you know the greatest thing about that storm? You know the good thing about that storm? We found out the pipes that were loose and but that could bust. We found out what, what, we, what would happen if we, if we did live up north. And we got green grass like now like you ain't never seen. So you see, there's some good things in never bad. You understand? There is some good things in never bad. But what you have to understand is we got to get to the point where we realize. Now, I'm going to show you all something. My kids, I can't wait to get home so I can straighten my kids out. Now, if you guys follow me on Facebook, I had a deal the other day about me getting dressed in, in the nighttime about my socks. And my kids must think it's funny because every time this thing pops up, and it does, 
This is what shows up on my daggum iPad. My socks, two different kinds of socks. And it's kind of hard to preach whenever you've got this <laughs> looking at you. So when I get home, i got to talk to my kids. I know they think it's funny right now, so if they're watching, they can... <laughs> Yeah, a new style. I guess that's what it is. It's a new style. A two, probably. <laughs> oh, gosh, they're so funny. Anyhow, let's look at this next verse here. Or Let me, let me talk to you, tell you something else here. In the Amplified Bible, uh, in Proverbs uh, 13, Proverbs 13, verse 3, says this right here. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Wow. Say that again. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Let's listen to the Amplified here. The one who guards his mouth thinks before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. You can always tell, I said it well ago, but I'm going to say it again. You can always tell someone who watches their mouth because they're slower to answer you. They're, they're, they'll stop a moment and they'll think about it before they speak. You know, uh, I used to always, uh, I, I've, I've had my wife tell me before, Bubba, you need to think before you speak. <laughs> Amen? We have. You need to think before you speak. You know, sometimes we, we am, I, am I, you know, we're guilty of it. Talk, talking your problems in fear will never help you to overcome your obstacles. You can get, man, let me tell you something. You want to see a, a cattle, local cattle market crash? Get three old men that took three cold calves to the sale barn, and they didn't bring but 75 cents, and let them sit around drinking coffee, and they'll tell you about how bad the cattle market is. All it takes is negativity at a, at a local coffee shop. And men, you can talk about women at the beauty shop all you want to. There ain't nobody worse than you are sitting in a coffee shop. Amen. That's just the way it is. And ladies, <laughs> it is a two-way street. You can sit there, and what happens is you got to realize this right here. If you're going through problems and everything, don't go to the local coffee shop and where everything is doom and gloom and oh, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Whoa. <laughs> Deep, dark depression, incessant misery. Oh, everybody loves misery. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Whoa. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. People just, you know, and, and they like, oh, brother, it's okay. Pity parties will not get you nowhere. You need somebody to gird. I'll never forget when I was a little kid. And, man, I had I, I got my leg cut real deep and everything right here. Man, this leg got cut deep. And rock flew out from underneath the lawnmower. And, I mean, it cut it deep. And I was getting over it and everything. Everything was just fine. Well, my dad's aunt come over. And she could give you a pity party. Lord, have mercy. She could give a pity party that was just, it was crazy the way this woman had a pity party. And so, anyhow, can I sit down right here? Is this all right? And, and so, anyhow, while she was sitting, she would come in. I was fine when she got there, but by the time she left, I could barely move. <laughs> and, man, when she finally left, my mama popped me upside the head and said, Get your butt up, boy. There ain't nothing wrong with you. What happened? I let that pity party take over. See, if it doesn't come from the Word of God, and if it's not real, then all of a sudden you'll start believing those negative things. And what's really worse than anything is leaders in a church. We, the leaders in the church are supposed to be the ones that are just supposed to build you up. So don't you, leaders of the church, and listen, I'm talking to all the leaders in the church. I don't, whether it's Sunday school, whether you're on the praise and worship team, no matter what you do, greet it at the door. The last thing people need to hear is how bad things are. Or how, 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 how negative things are. What people need to hear is how great this God, our God is. And when we realize how great our God is and the words that come out of our mouth and we believe that we can overcome and we can conquer, you know, there's some things that you don't need to spew out of your mouth. The devil is waiting and looking for somebody to speak something negative so he can use it. When You know, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God. 
In the beginning was the word. You know, God felt words were so important that he, that he named Jesus the word. And so, and, and it tells us in John, and it, you don't have to uh, put the scripture up or anything, but in John chapter 1, it tells us that in the beginning was the word, and word was God, and word was with God. And nothing was made that was not made unless it went through him. Amen. Jesus made everything. Everything that was made was through Jesus. Everything good comes through Jesus Christ. Everything that happened was through Jesus. But the whole thing is what happens is, and, and then what did God do? God spoke the word out. And when God spoke the word, when he spoke the word, that word had one thing. It had a target, and it was to go hit it. Amen. And whenever it went out to hit that target, bless God, it, it did not return. Oh, I'm getting sad in myself, but it's getting exciting. Whenever you realize that the word is for one thing, to create something, the words out of your mouth are for to create and when you realize that the words that are coming out of your mouth are going to create something, good, bad, or ugly. Hello, come on, come on. Good, bad, or ugly. The words coming out of your mouth is going to create a, a peace, joy, unspeakable, full of glory, or it's going to create a hell pit that you're going to have to live in. And people say, well, here goes some of that name it, claim it stuff. You know what? The word of God says you're to speak. You're to speak. What did God do? How did you get here? Let us make man in our own image. He said, let us make man in our own image. There, you know what? There's not a vaccine that I don't give that it's got a target to hit. And if that vaccine don't work, I use another vaccine. That vaccine don't work, I use another vaccine. I go through about three of them, and then they deserve to die. And so a good thing that we're not a calf. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but, but what happens is every one of those vaccines have a target. Every, every vaccine, every medicine that I've, I've put in a cow or a calf has a target to hit, and I want it to hit that target. If it don't hit the target, I back up and I regroup, and I say, well, what does it need here? I have a vet rep that I can call, and that vet rep can tell, I say, hey, this is this. I've got this going on, this going on. Hey, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. And then all of a sudden, when it gets, they're known as a chronic. And it, what happens is this right here. God don't give up on us. But it gets to a point in time, it's like, you know what, I'm tired of messing with this. You know, sometimes it says that, that people are born again, and some of them, they're just saved by just, the, the, just being ripped out of the pit of hell. You understand what I'm saying? I got, you know what, out of all the yardens and, and the calves and, and the cows and everything that we do, I got one old calf that I just got out there, and I, I, you know what, I'm letting him hang out. You know why? That sucker's a chronic. I just sometimes just want to give him an extra shot just to see if I can save that thing. Sometimes I got pity on something. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, I want to see if this thing will just actually make it. And, you know, what we have to understand is this right here. The words that come out of our mouth have got to be a target. They're going to shoot a target, and those words that are coming out of our mouth have got to go somewhere. They're going, and, and what happens is, now I'm going to, I know I'm getting way out of my scriptures and everything here, but guys, let me tell you something. I want to show you something here. When, when we realize this, that those words, skip on down there, if you will, into Isaiah 55 uh, on, uh, and verse 8 through 11. And let's look at these words that come out right here. And this is what he says right here. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and forth and but uh, and oh excuse me, and, and for the, as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and do not return, but the water the earth, and make it bring forth a bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my, what? Word. word. So shall my word be that that goes forth from my, what? Mouth. Mouth. And it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper. It shall do what? Prosper in the things which I sent it. God gives us words. Do you know we're the only creature on the earth that can speak anything we want to? We have the freedom to speak. We have the freedom. And man, do we like to talk. Now then we got it to where we can talk with our fingers. 
and we can put things, and we got these, uh, we got these, uh, what do you call them, keyboard warriors, and we can say all kinds of things. We can block Pastor Will so that he don't see it, and we can put all kinds of stuff on there. And what happens is this right here. We can say all the things that we can say, and we can we can solve, we, we can be something on there that, you know, that, that we don't think it, that it really matters in anything, but the words that we put on paper, the words that we put out of our mouth, those words are so important, and those words are going to touch people's lives. Good or bad, the words that we put touches people's lives. Does that make sense? Are y'all following me? Or you want me to hurry up and shut up? I mean, seriously, because guys, let me tell you, this thing is so important for us to get down on the inside of us that, that the words, the words, the words that we have, our knowledge is useless if we can't control our mouth. You can go to all the con uh, conferences. You can go to the conferences and you can get all the, the CDs and the DVDs. And, and this is what I do a lot of. I, I, I get on YouTube. And man, there is YouTube stuff that you can, you can, there is no reason for somebody not to get the word of God down inside of them nowadays. You can listen to it. Man, we've got so much knowledge. We've got so much and, you know, and uh, it's just so, and it's doubling and it's getting, and, and we know it's getting close to the end of time. But we can get this down on the inside of us for everything that's out there. But you know what? You can have all of that down inside of you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can get all the word of God down on the inside of you, and then we can ruin it all by what comes out of our mouth. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. What we have to do, we have to realize when we get the word of God down on the inside of us, and we got it, we, we got, God has given us these gifts God has given this stuff. You know, now, now the, the world will try to take it and, and turn it around and, and put all this negativity and everything on there. But this, and, and, so, and then I hear some people, well, I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that. Listen, we can use social media to reach the world because the world is reaching your children and grandchildren through social media. So what you have, a lot of times what happens is the church wants to sit back and say, I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm, I'm just old-fashioned. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Let me tell you something. These young evangelists that are coming up that are getting on there and, and ministering the word and everything on there, man, you need to pray for them. There, there's a group, there, one, one particular group that I like, listen, there's, there's a Nashville prayer deal going on in Nashville and, uh, and, it's, and it's Nashville something other. I just got it. I'm just joined it on my deal. These young kids, they're in their 20s. I mean, I guess I can call them kids, can I? I mean, I got grandkids. I mean, but these young kids are so on fire, and they're just, they're just, they're just seeking God's face, just seeking His face. And they're and and listen. You can get there, and you can get yourself built up going down the road. My gosh, you can just get yourself. Don't close your eyes as you drive. <laughs> but but listen, and you can get yourself built up because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so what we have to understand is this right here. When when we get to that point and we see God moving in our lives, that and that our words are literally on a mission. And as we speak these words out of our mouth, we can see God move and do some great and powerful things. Amen? Amen. Let's look at this right here. Your words are not just for communicating. They're for accomplishing. That's something. They're to accomplish something. Your words that come out of your mouth. I have a young man that works for me, and this young man, he is good. He, is, he has got a heart of gold. He speaks Spanish, and, uh, and he, he handles a lot of the Hispanic uh, uh, customers that come and buy cattle. And this young man has got a heart of gold. But what happens a lot of times, you know, you, we're, I just kind of just narrow him down just a little bit and everything because he'll, he'll just, if, if the people want to go over here, he'll go there. If people want to go over there and look at cattle there, they'll go over there. It's kind of just got to narrow things down. A lot of times that's the way our words are. we got to narrow those words down and realize, God, you know what? We're not shotgunning anything here. We want to shoot our own for a mission here. And our words need to be on a mission. So now let, let's look at this right here, and, and I'm going to quit. I'm going to show you one other thing. A cattle guard. You know what a cattle guard is used for? Keep cattle out, right? Or keep cattle in. 
Well, at my house, or at, no, at, not at my house, at the barn where, uh, where I was raised at, my parents have, have a cattle guard. That when you pull into their driveway, there, you go across this cattle guard and, there's a, uh, and, and, and you go up into their drive. Well, what happens a lot of times, that cattle guard's been there since I in, was in high school, and we've cleaned it out a couple of times, but, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, sometimes cows will cross the cattle guard. What happens is, as, as they cross that cattle guard, I get a phone call from my mother, and my mother lets me know extremely firmly, there's cows in the yard. Anybody understand? I always get the last word in when I speak to my mother. I say, yes, ma'am. And I take care of the problem. And you know, and all of a sudden, you know, if, and, and so what happens is there, there's, a, there's a pasture, right, there's, there's a place right there that, and, that they can get in and, and, and we, I move the cows and so we don't have that no problem. But what we have to understand is this right here, that that guard over our mouth is kind of like a cattle guard. You can't let, and if you keep letting the same things come across that cattle guard, if you keep letting the same words, if you ha if you hang out with the same people that cause things to go across your cattle guard and, st and start dragging you down, I don't care if Billy Bob's been your friend for forty years. If Billy Bob's dragging you down, if you can't build Billy Bob up, y'all need to part ways. Amen. You understand? And I don't mean that negative. What you be a witness to Billy Bob? Hope nobody's in here tonight, Billy Bob, but. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but you can even understand this right here. You can, sometimes we have to get to the point where the words that we speak. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, and Will, I know you've seen this before. Um, man, you get around certain people that all of a sudden, and, and they always talk a certain way, but then when they find out that you're a preacher or, uh, or, or a Christian or something, and then they go to fumbling over their words. Yes. God Bless that, and then, you know, they just start saying different things. You understand what I'm saying? But what we have to understand is the words that come out of our mouth, ladies and gentlemen, are so important. You say, well, I don't believe words are that important. You better. Let me tell you why. Amen. He said, to you, we believe in our heart. The only way you can accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, believing in the heart, confess with the mouth. Now, how important are words? There's only two people that I know of that I've led to Christ that weren't able to talk. I had two different peop uh, people who was on their deathbed, and they could not talk. And they could hear me, but they could not speak. And I told them, I said, I'm going to lead you through the center prayer. And I said, if, if we're, as I lead you through the center prayer, if, if you're agreeing with me, I want you to squeeze my hand. And I said, dear Lord Jesus, and they squeeze my hand. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and they squeeze my hand. I led two different people through. Uh, one, one lady in a nursing home, one young man was in a uh, in the hospital. Now let me tell you the story of this man, and, and I'm gonna close with this right here. As uh, I may close with that right here. I better watch that <laughs> word. I gotta watch my own words. I had a couple, young man, rough, just damaged, rough. I mean, they were rough. I tell this story a lot. If you've ever heard me minister, y'all might have even told it. Y'all might have heard me tell it. But it, beep, beep, yeah. And as this family called me and asked me to come to the uh, hospital to minister to the son. And so the, anyhow, I went to the hospital and ministered to the son. And the mother had told the whole family, said he was dying of cancer. And he had a situation. And he, he It was a bad situation. And it wasn't, it, it was bad. This young man is about 30 years old. Because he was, uh, they got everybody out of the room. His brother, his brother was cussing me. His words coming out of his mouth were speaking negative things. And, it, and he was cussing me because he was having to leave his brother because he's dying in the, in the room. So as the room cleared out, I grabbed him by the hand. And I asked him, I said, brother, I'm not going to mention his name in case somebody's watching. I said, do you, do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? And he just kind of, and I said, are you afraid of dying? And when I said, are you afraid of dying? This guy, he jumped straight up out of bed and he let out a scream like you have never heard before in your life. I said, hey, 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 it's all right. I said, man, let's take care of this. And I led him through the center prayer. Dear Jesus, led him through the prayer. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. 
squeezed my hand, went through the whole prayer, and I told him, I said, listen, I want you to know that you don't have to fear no more because you've got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there was a peace that come across that room. I can't imagine. As I walked out of that room, brothers on the outside that was cussing me. That night, or the next morning, that young man died. Brother, going back to Austin, pulls into Georgetown, get him something at Starbucks, guts out of his car, dies with a heart attack. I get a phone call that night from Mama, lost two babies in a 24-hour period, want to know if I do the funerals. I said, yes, ma'am, be happy to. As we're sitting there about a week later, I've got one urn in one hand that accepted Jesus. I've got another urn in another hand that did not. I walked up to and I asked her, I said, ma'am, may I, may I use this as an example to get people to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? And she said, you do anything you want to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this right here. The words out of your mouth can either curse you or they can put you over the top. Yes. Let me tell you something. Your pastor here on the front row, he has spoke blessings in him. You know the reason he's alive right now? He has spoken blessings over himself. He has hung out with people. You have people that sit by him. And, you, and, and, and the thing about it is, and I'm sure there's been times that Will had to get away from people that would speak negativity even in the church. And but, the, but the reason is because there's been words of life being spoken over him, and that's the reason cancer didn't take him out. He took cancer out. Amen. For the simple fact, words are so important. Who, who else that may be going through this? Uh, you know, there may, and and the, the bad thing is this right here. Man, let me tell you something. My pastor, uh, which is Robert Henderson, Robert says this right here. Robert says this right here. He said, you know what? He said, there's been time and time again that I spoke negative words over my own children, not even realizing it, not even realizing what I say. It's easy to speak negative words over my children because I see the precious things every day. <laughs> but there may be times that they're going to, you know, I, I want to do other things to them, but it's easy to say negative words to the ones we're closest to. It's easy for my, my wife, you say this right here, everybody thinks you're so great, but they don't have to pick up your dirty underwear. It's true. <laughs> you know, uh, the ones that were around, the, those are the ones we hurt the worst. But what we got to do is start speaking life over the, the, our children and around us, our wives, and, and, and the, everything or, uh, that's in such a close net right here with us. And if we'll start getting to that point, then we can branch out. How great, you know, and it's kind of like this right here. I don't care. How great is your ministry if you can go all over the world and you can't even touch your children? And so we got to get to the point where we, we that, that's where we're at. And if we've had failures, hey, you know what? Get up, dust yourself off, and go again. You just get up, dust yourself off, and just, hey, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Do you know you look, you look, you can look at anybody that's, that's, uh, that that might have uh, that's been successful in life. The thing about it is, they probably had more failures than anybody. Hank Aaron, greatest home run hitter of all times, or, or no, it was Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was the one, and he they said he had more strikeouts than anybody else. Why? Every time he got there, he tried to kill it. He tried to kill it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when we get up in the morning. We're going to just get, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it, even if it is daylight savings time. I mean, that game, we're going to get up. We're going to have a good time. We're going to reach, we're going to reach people for the kingdom of God. We're going to see things done. We're going to change our words. We're going to have words that's going to, going to build up and not tear down. We're going to see God do some great things in our life. Amen. And we can never, ever, ever forget how important it is to see God move in our lives. Amen. Now, then I want us to do this right here, and I'm going to close. What about your words? What about your words that you've ever spoken? 
What about the negative things that you hear about? Do they, do they bring you down? Is there voices that try to hold you down to where you, you say, well, I, I just can't overcome. I can't conquer. I can't do this. Man, ladies and gentlemen, there ain't nobody in here has had more failures than I have. But you know what? You got to dust yourself off, get up, and go again. I've seen things done. It's like, man, what do we do here? What do we? You know, it's kind of like this right here. When I started, uh, there were, when we started selling uh, cows on the Internet, and I started selling nurse cows, and I was buying, I was buying these nurse cows, and man, I was buying them. I was buying these nurse cows, and I was buying these. I was, you could buy these Jersey bull calves cheaper than you could buy anything. They were just little old cheap knots, man. They ain't worth nothing, and they just ain't worth nothing. <laughs> and I go in, I get those things, and, and I and I get some that just about half sick, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try this medicine. I'm gonna try this medicine. And then when by the time now, then a few years later, and everything. Uh, People say, man, he, that, that boy can save the cat. You know, if he's, if he's kind of sickly like that, little old orphans like that. And they asked me, they said, how did you learn to do that? I said, because I killed more than anybody else. <laughs> I've had more die on me than anybody else in here, and that's not nothing negative. That's a fact. I, I had the fattest buzzards around. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of like this right here. The buzzards family reunions took place at my house. But you know what the thing about it is? I just keep on, keep it on, keep on, keep it on. And it was almost kind of like you go to the dairy and everything. Like, Don't go with him. Like, we've heard about that. <laughs> but you got to understand, you might have had failures. I've had failures. Man, I've, I've failed. I've busted it. But you know what? It's kind of like this right here. If I'm going to do anything, if it's going to be a failure, it's going to be a big splash. Because I want to give God all there is. And I want to see God do that. I'm going to speak louder. I'm going to proclaim him. I had a young man this last week. This last week. Another just short story. I told you, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. He was a horse jockey. And this horse jockey was, uh, he, he was, he, he, he'd been busted up and everything. He was from up in Oklahoma. He'd come down here and he was working on a ranch. And he brought some, uh, he brought some stuff to the buying station and, and about two weeks ago, and he told me, just keep up with it. When we get to the bottom, we're going to trade it in on some cattle. I said, okay, no problem. So anyhow, got it all worked out and everything. And, and man, I was busy. I, my, my, I had my guys, you know, my guys was gone and everything. I was busy and everything. And he come back. He said, man, he said, and he called me Bobby. He said, Mr. Bobby, he said, if you don't mind, he said, I can't hardly get out of my truck. He said, you mind getting a, getting a uh, unloading for me and everything? He said, I'll go back. And he said, I'll get the rest of them. And I'll bring them back. Man, that's no problem. No problem. So then, and, but all of a sudden, there was just a tugging. And, and, it was, and, in which, and I've been studying this about my words. And so all of a sudden, it's like the Holy Ghost said, just be still. This man went to pouring his heart out. Begin to tell me about the negative things that's taking place, and man, he's just hurting, and his knee was, and, and I felt of his knee, and his knee was hot. And he told me, he said, "Man, I've been bunged up." And he was, he was speaking all these words coming out of his mouth. He said, "Man, I got bunged up on the track. And man, I just, I just this and that and other." We're talking about how how bad things were. And then all of a sudden, I just asked him. I said, "I pray for you." And when I asked him to pray for me, it was like it melted. Like ice melting in a snowstorm. And he said, yes, please. And I prayed with him. Not a big, long prayer, because I don't believe if, you've got, if you're witnessing somebody, the last thing they want you to do is keep them there 45 minutes praying for them. <laughs> Say the word. Get the word. God puts on your heart. Because God's not that long-winded. He's not. Just say the word and go on. Two hours, he leaves. I unload his uh, bulls. He leaves. Two hours later, he calls me up. And he said, man, can you come down here to the ranch and get, uh, get the rest of these cattle? I said, sure. On my way. I sent my children to town to get lunch. I said, I'm going to go down here and get these, uh, these other bulls. I go down there. This man comes out. He said, man, you won't believe this. I said, what's that? He said, 
My wife died in 2006. She was a prayer warrior. I was so mad at God. He said, I've never darkened the doors of a church. She told me that one day, one day, there was going to be a man come by and just say, can I pray for you? I'm not saying that to put anything on me, but I'm saying that because God puts people in front of you every day, but we're so busy with our life that we won't take time to say a prayer. Guys, I'm a busy man. I made some changes about two weeks ago in my life, though, let me tell you something. I said, you know what, God? I'm too busy for you, and I'm slowing this thing down. I'm slowing this thing down. Yep, this and here's going to say this, and this and here's going to say that. And I've had people come to me, man, there's talk on town about you, this, this, this. And I don't really care. I'm taking my time, and I'm slowing this thing down. Because there is nothing. When I get too and busy for God, you better look out. There's, there, there's a wall coming up that you're fixing to hit. So I'm going to end it with this right here. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power to love and a sound mind. God does not give you fear, and God, you don't own fear. Fear is not of you. Fear is of the devil. There's been words that have been spoken. You have spoken words out of your mouth, and then all of a sudden you sit here, and then the, the same way we have a watchman over our words is the same way that the devil's standing there. If we don't have a watchman over our words, when we speak a negative and fearful words out of our mouth, the devil grabs a hold of them, and he puts them down inside of your heart, and that's where fear comes from. And fear is the only thing that will cause you not to pray for somebody because you're a good people. You are a good person, and good people want to pray for people, and good people want to be able to have, have the peace, joy, unspeakable, full of glory, and give it to everybody else. Who wouldn't want to? Man, great. It's like having a, a truckload of watermelons on a hot summer day, and your watermelons are ice cold, and you got plenty, and you want to give them away. Man, everybody wants to give away a good watermelon if her name is Bubba. And what happens is this right here. But fear will cause us not to do that. And I want to pray for you. Can I do that? So if you're in here and you say, you know what? I want that freedom. I want that freedom. I don't care who, I, I, I don't care who laughs at me anymore. I don't. I, I, I don't care. The greatest, the greatest thing in the world is being, and, and guys, listen, I don't pray long. You know those people that pray, you know, man, I remember we had this old woman when I was a little kid. She would pray, and she prayed longer than the preacher preached. And it's like, Lord have mercy. If I ever get grown, I'm going to go to a church where they don't pray long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, she was like, God, she done pray for everybody in the country. Lord, let her, let her pray at home. <laughs> but you know what? Just, just get your freedom. You know, you can just go up to somebody. You know, what, what, you know, God, I just speak blessings over him. Lord, just, just touch him in Jesus' name. You know, people don't have to hear, you know, you're talking about old Blue the dog and everything else that's in the world, but, but just show people that you love them. There's a hurting, dying world out here, and they're not all coming in here. They're not. The only way you're going to get them is you're going to go out there and show them the love of God. And then, then, if they come here, great. Great. But if they don't, never darken the doors. You've done your part. And you know what? It's not about building numbers in the church. It's about building numbers in the kingdom of God. I consider myself a pastor's pastor. You'll never hear me. We... You'll never, ever, ever hear me trying to do anything but to build the kingdom of God. I'll build the pastor up. I will build the pastor up. And if you have something bad to say about the pastor, don't you come to me. We, you, you don't never come to me about something that, you know, you, you got elders. You got things set up. But let me tell you something. You never, ever, ever run your leadership down. You, you want to have something come back down on your head? Start running pastors down. Who's in authority over you? So let's do this. Let's pray.
Who wants to come up here? Who, who would say, you know what? I, I, want, I want that freedom. I want that to stand at our feet. I want that freedom to pray for people. I really want that freedom just to pray for people. And it, it just come on up here. Let's, let's just pray. Anybody? Praise God. Praise God. You know, it's kind of like this right here. You've you got to be bold. Amen. Y'all come on. Us men are the worst. We are. We are. We're, I, and I'm saying that because I, I need one. I know my gender. <laughs> but we do. We, a lot of times we, we have this big man mentality, and we don't think, we, you know, we, it, it's, it's not cool. You know, we, we just, you know, we would raise, well, don't you cry, don't you cry. Only grow, only real men cry. Amen. So let's just pray in Jesus' name. If anybody else wants to come up, y'all come on. Lord, I love you. Father, we just love you. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. And Father God, we just, with the, this, Lord, the spirit of fear that would come on people, that cause people not to, not to uh, do what you would have us to do. Father God, we just, and right now, we just break it off. We break it off. And Father God, we just decree right now peace, which surpasses all understanding. And we release it into him right now. Lord, give him that peace, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And I thank you for it right now, Father God. Lord, we honor you. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just right, release into my brother. Lord, we cancel that fear. Lord, we just don't want that boldness to speak out. Just that boldness to speak out, God. And Father God, that's what we call for in Jesus' name. No fear, but only you, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you right now. And we just give you all the honor, glory, and praise. That gut feeling that you get, you just, you know, man, I should have I said something right there. That's God. That's God. That gut feeling said, man, I, I need to say something right there. I should have prayed. Doggone, I should have prayed for that guy. That's God. Satan will never tell you to pray for somebody. Father, we just decree we release right now into his life, Father God. And Lord, we just decree right now that anointing to just to pray for people, to speak encouraging words right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Let me ask you this right here. If you're in here and you've never ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you'd like to come up, and I'm going to turn it over to Will, but if you'd like to come up and let's pray with you, let us do that. Anybody in here? Anybody in here? Just raise your hand and come on up here. Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. Can the leaders come up? Can the leaders come up? We're going to pray over your pastor. Man, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just circle around him. Come on. Let's just, just, let's just it, it, but, but if you've got alt against your pastor and you got negative things, stay back. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. This man here, I'm, I'm looking for him to get back at bulked up size again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just pray for him. Well, at least there ain't nobody got any negative things against you. Back up there. <laughs> Praise God. Where's Bob? There's not, there's not a young one. Okay, okay, okay. All right. He can pray in there. If, if, yes, Lord. No, that's all right. That's all right. We'll, we'll pray right here. We'll pray right here. Many of people have stood, and many people have stood. And some would have given up their hand, threw up their hands and said, I quit. But you threw your hands up and said, yes, Lord. And for the simple fact that you say, yes, Lord, God's going to use you in a way. God's going to use you. And yes, your be the best days are still ahead of you. God has not called you this far just to see you drop off. But we're not here to do a funeral. We're here to do a raising up. And we're going to see God do great and powerful things for the simple fact that will bountiful. When he has done all 
he could do to stand and stood. And people are going to see it and they're going to say, that man has been through it, but he went on the other side. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I, I speak to this body. And like in Ezekiel, Lord, when, when we speak to these dry bones, Lord, we speak to these bones, and as the sinew comes together on the bones, and Lord, uh, uh, it was in there. Lord, this body's not dead, but this body is alive, God. And Father God, I, I, I speak muscles on this body. I speak muscles on this body. I speak tight flesh on this body. Lord, I speak hair on his head, even though mine's going away, God. But I speak hair on his head in Jesus' name. Lord, I call it forth. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that these clothes are filling out now in Jesus' name for the simple fact that this man, has, he has stood, he has stood, and Father God, we release him, and we call it done, God. We call it, we release our faith into his body right now, and we thank you for it, Father God, and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for supernatural strength. I speak to those Slavic glands to work properly in Jesus' name. I thank you for it. I thank you for clarity in his body. Lord, and I thank you that his children is going to know my dad is a man of God that has stood. And Lord, he's going to get the attention. He's going to get the attention, but he's going to give it all to you. And it's you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. anybody else up here? Anybody else here need a prayer for healing? Anybody need prayer? Anything? Praise God. Praise God. Anybody got any encouraging word for your pastor? Ha, ha, ha. 
anyway, but you live by faith and not by sight, and that has really encouraged me. And uh, and you have uh, love, like I told you before, the gift of love. Not everybody has that. And uh, like your mother, and I just want to uh, tell you that, that we love you. Anybody else? stare at him, but um, I'm going to say from the bottom of my heart for me and my husband, I've stood by this man from thick and thin, and he's like my little brother. <laughs> and I think about when B-Pop was here, and when all of your family was here, and what a privilege it was to worship with them. And I keep thinking, B-Pop, B-Pop, I don't know why, but he just keeps on going on my mind, but I think, Will, you have been planning for such a time as this, and you are so faithful. And God will see us through everything. And I didn't believe that you were going to have the faith to move the mountains, you know. And I'm just like, wow, what a man of God. But I want us to say, your children, I pray for those children each and every night. I pray for you. We just pray a special blessing on you. Because God knows where you are. He's going to heal you. And I believe that firmly. He's healed. You're healed in Jesus' name. And we know that, you know. And so we call that in right now that you are healed. Man, what an awesome testimony you're going to have for others, though. I see it all around us as we see other people come, and they're like, I don't I don't understand how this man stands before us and sings and preaches and all that, and all this is coming against him, but yet he stands firm and stands on the mighty mountain and preaches the word of God. second doubt it, but I really feel that you are here for such a time as this. You're a part of our family. This is a family that God has put together. And uh, I tell you what, it's been a long, long time since I've looked forward to Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings to just to see what God is doing. And uh, anyone that's listening to this online, we just encourage you to come. And be a part of this because God just spoke to me. Well, this we're going to be a healing hospital here because we're going to have a faith. You've got the faith of a mustard seed, and and with that, that has brought as it grows to be a, such a tree as the birds not only come and light in it, but they build their nest in it. So it's strong, and uh, I, I just uh, I just want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for you giving when you didn't even feel like giving. But you're, a, but you, you know what? God literally gave you the strength to see you through. You might have gone home and collapsed, but for that time you were up there, you had strength of an ox. It's, it's the words, our words. This is a time that you can use your words. And even as we go out of this foyer, 
out of here you can speak good words over your pastor. Anybody else? Here you go. Yes, ma'am. love you and praise you. We adore you. I thank you for Will. I thank you for our relationship, God. I thank you for his strength. And God, we seal every word that has been spoken here with the anointing and the blood of Jesus. And Father God, as we go home, we thank you that we're going to speak the words that you would have us to speak and no other. And Lord, I thank you for supernatural strength. Lord, we, we, we release strength into Will's body. And Lord, we just end we speak life over the everyone that's just watching online, Father God. We speak blessings over them. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> I guess you're dismissed. <laughs>